Comedian Dave Chappelle has been making us laugh for more than 30 years. He studied theater at a performing arts high school in Washington, D.C., and then he started sneaking into comedy clubs back when he was 14 years old. His career exploded after the Chappelle show on Comedy Central, but he suddenly abandoned the show at the height of his success. Now he is back with a three-part stand-up comedy special. Chappelle often shies away from interviews, but he agreed to sit down with us for a chat you will see only on CBS This Morning. You know, but there was all sorts of speculation. Is he crazy? Did he have a breakdown? Is he on drugs? And the more, if you really read the Dave Chappelle story, it almost seems like it was more of peace of mind than it was about money. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a guy. He, he basically said to me that comedy is a, a reconciliation of paradox. And I think that that was a irreconcilable moment for me, mm -hmm. that I was in this very successful place, but the emotional content of it didn't feel anything like what I imagined success should feel like. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel right. This is it. This is the first episode. Y'all ready? So, some sketch comedy. Y'all ready to see some sketches? Do you miss the Chappelle show? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, but the Chappelle show's like breaking up with a girl, and you still like her, but in your mind, like, that bitch is crazy. I'm not going back. <laughs> I do like to move around when I'm in thought. Chappelle not only left the show walking away from a $50 million deal, he left the country, going to South Africa to escape. Did the fame scare you? Fame, yeah, but not, not so much that I get on a plane to Africa. Fame is, is not that kind of scary, but it is, fame is a horrifying concept yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's aimed at you, you know. At the end of the day, it's something, you don't have that much control over it. You just try to conduct yourselves the best you can. I started doing drugs when I was little, just like you, fellas. For two seasons, his best was Comedy Central's Chappelle Show. Critically acclaimed and wildly popular. Is anyone up for a game of basketball? <laughs> I want to talk about Prince, because that show is still one of the funniest ones. And then we tried to get Prince, and we were like, yeah, we got this sketch, and it's about you, and, and Prince was like, no. He was just like, no. But then he saw the sketch, and he loved it. Yeah. Game. <laughs> Blouses. It was complete coincidence that the weekly sketch came out. He uh, got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But even when you walked away in 2005, you were still working. It's just that we didn't know all the things that you were doing. You really stayed low. Stay I, I found an altitude I was comfortable with. You know, I found a way to, to do what I like to do and avoid some of the parts of it that I was uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. What were you uncomfortable with? Well, I mean, if you look at me, right, physically, you know, like now, I'm like 40 pounds heavier than I was when I did Chappelle's show. Welcome, everybody, to Chappelle's show. And people are like, how did you gain all that weight? By resting you know, and like eating it and paying attention to myself. I have actual relationships with my kids. See him again. We're big I've been all over the country touring all my life, oh, but I never saw anything. Now I've seen everything. I, I could talk to people. Uh, I could. I had time to stop if someone said they liked me. It wasn't like I'd brush past them. Like I don't want to hear it. I had time to stop. Like you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it was just like the way that I engaged the world was different. I'm starting to get to a point where like, I'd like my life to mean something. Like when he came to Allen well. University in Columbia, South Carolina. He wanted to talk to the students. Out. It's okay to be afraid, because you can't be brave or courageous without fear. The idea of being courageous is that even though you're scared, you just do the right thing anyway. So in 2004, I walked away from $50 million. And in November, I made a deal for $60 million. So. Hey, welcome back home, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He also went to the church named after his great-grandfather, a piece of his family's history he wanted to explore. Hi. <laughs> I'm here to bail out my buddy. <laughs> oh, OK. Well. While you're here, you do fit a description. Chappelle's own history is you're rooted right, in stand-up comedy. Process, yeah. He started performing when he was only 14. Do you remember when you got your first laugh? Yeah, first night I was on stage. I can remember who introduced me. I can remember what my introduction was. I can remember the whole let me thing. hear, let me hear. This guy named J.T. Newton, he said, 
You know, folks, everybody starts somewhere. And tonight, this young man is doing stand-up comedy for the first time. He goes, and who knows? We may be witnessing the birth of a star. Please welcome Dave Chapel. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I did pretty good. They were like, I, I, screaming. And he's like, that's all for you, kid. That's all for you. But they were treating it like, you know, like I was in the Make-A-Wish Foundation or something, and they just wanted to give me a little boost. But it, it was encouraging, man. And, and it felt so good. You know, you'll go through a million bad nights mm -hmm. to get those good ones. Mm -hmm. Three days ago, this was a place where animals lived and <laughs> Tonight, it is a place where human beings will get drunk and throw up. His good nights now involve juke joints, part concert, part party, and all day. DJ, be nice. You never go to a party where everyone shows up at the same time. But the juke joint is the kind of party where everyone shows up at the same time. And we start and we finish the night together. And it's just like, it's a very eclectic crowd. What do you want us to feel in there? It's like, you know, love and camaraderie and mm -hmm. kinship, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's just a reminder, like, in my town is so small, you throw an event like that in, the, in town, it's, it's, it's the big dance. That small town is about 20 miles outside of Dayton, Ohio, and far away from the pressure of big city life. Are you ever out here at night walking? Yeah, I'll walk at night, especially when I first get back from the road. It's nice out. Scary, too. Why? It's raccoons. You can hear them, like, rustling in the woods. And... You scared of raccoons? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> that's, a, that's an irrational fear that I just have. So if we want to get to you, Dave, get a raccoon? Yeah, I'm not scared of them, like, they're like, if I see, see them out close, they freak me out. Mm -hmm. They're a little too bold. They got, they got those hands. <laughs> the town is progressive and artsy. Hey, man, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Hey, it's right, That's good to see you. Let's go one second. A place, I'm, I'm Chappelle busy. says, he's treated like a neighbor, not a big star. I'll stop by. Are you calmer here? Generally speaking, yeah. I have time to, to think about things, and I think... For a comedian, if you don't have time to think, you're just not as effective. Mm -hmm. That if you, you know, it gets a little corporate. I quit! <laughs> it's that corporate feel he left behind when he departed Comedy Central. <laughs> where Key and Peel became the comedians to watch. I think there's a speculation that Dave doesn't like Key and Peel, or Dave thinks, okay. No, I'm a fan of this show. You know, when I did Chappelle's show, there were certain conventions of the show that the network resisted. And I fought the network very hard so that those conventions could come to fruition. We're looking for a Clayton Bigsby. Well, look no further, fella. You found me. The first episode, I do that black white supremacist sketch. And it's like, well, that's 10 minutes long. It should be five minutes long. Why should it be five minutes long? Like these types of conventions. And I fought very hard. So when I watched King and Peel, and I see they're doing the format that I created. And at the end of the show, it says created by Kim Peel. That hurts my feelings. I've been gone for a very long time. Surprise, it's me. Right now, he's focused on his new creation, three highly anticipated multi-million dollar Netflix specials. You know, America has a racial hot seat. I think we can all agree that that's the truth. And we can also agree that that hot seat is traditionally occupied by African Americans in general, African American men in particular. Dave, you tell jokes from everything, from race to politics. Do you worry about crossing the line, or is there a line that you won't cross? Although I can see that in recent years, that seat has been occupied by, by Mexicans, <laughs> and I dare say Arabs. <laughs> and we, the black Americans, would like to thank you both for your sacrifice <laughs> and your struggle. Comedy is weird. The line moves, it changes. But I think a lot of, especially in comedy, a lot of it has to do with intent. And your intent is? Mm, to make people laugh, mm -hmm. to reconcile paradox. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just openly, sometimes I'm just openly vent. I think that when you get to a certain altitude, there's more scrutiny over the things you say, because the platform is so powerful.
So you spent this time with him. What is the takeaway that you come away with most? Well, I mean, I, I, number one, that he's extremely smart, as most comedians are. But when you talk about how do you walk away from $50 million, he didn't like Charlie being controlled. Everybody came in with all sorts of ideas about how his show should be done, cut this out, put this in. He said people that didn't really understand him and understand his comedy, so it wasn't worth that. So I, to me, he was such a man of integrity. There were a lot of snickers and what's wrong with him. But when you talk to him, it's very clear. He's very, he's very committed to who he is. So I totally get that. And I didn't at first. I didn't. Does he seem whole at this point? Oh, he seems he... very whole. Listen, he's married. He's been married to the same woman for a very long time. Has three great kids, and he lives in this town in Ohio. He's very, very happy. And can't wait to get on the road. He says he's very nervous. <laughs> very nervous what people say about the Netflix special, but it's very good. These will be three different specials. Yeah, three different specials. Talking to a guy, he, he basically said to me that comedy is a, a reconciliation of paradox. And I think that that was a irreconcilable moment for me, mm -hmm. that I was in this very successful place, but the emotional content of it didn't feel anything like what I imagined success should feel like. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel right. This is it. This is the first episode. Y'all ready? It's a, some sketch comedy. Y'all ready to see some sketches? Do you miss the Chappelle show? Yeah. Do you? Yeah, but the Chappelle show's like breaking up with a girl, and you still like her, but in your mind, you're like, that bitch is crazy. <laughs> I'm not going back. <laughs> For a game of basketball. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Prince, because that show was still one of the funniest ones. And then we tried to get Prince, and we were like, yeah, we got this sketch, and it's about you, and, and Prince was like, no. <laughs> he was just like, no. But then he saw the sketch, and he loved it. Yeah. Game. <laughs> Blouses. It was complete coincidence that the weekly sketch came out. He uh, got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. But even when you walked away in 2005, you were still working. It's just that we didn't know all the things that you were doing. You really stayed low. Stay I, I found an altitude. Comedian Dave Chappelle has been making us laugh for more than 30 years. He studied theater at a performing arts high school in Washington, D.C., and then he started sneaking into comedy clubs back when he was 14 years old. His career exploded after the Chappelle show on Comedy Central, but he suddenly abandoned the show at the height of his success. Now he is back with a three-part stand-up comedy special. Chappelle often shies away from interviews, but he agreed to sit down with us for a chat you will see only on CBS This Morning. You know, but there was all sorts of speculation. Is he crazy? Did he have a breakdown? Is he on drugs? And the more, if you really read the Dave Chappelle story, it almost seems like it was more of peace of mind than it was about money. You know, it's funny. I, was, I do like to move around when I'm in thought. Chappelle not only left the show walking away from a $50 million deal, he left the country, going to South Africa to escape. Did the fame scare you? Fame, yeah, but not, not so much that I get on a plane to Africa. Fame is, is not that kind of scary, but it is, fame is a horrifying concept yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's aimed at you, you know. At the end of the day, it's not, you don't have that much control over it. You just try to conduct yourself the best you can. I started doing drugs when I was little, just like you, fella. For two seasons, his best was Comedy Central's Chappelle Show. Critically acclaimed and wildly popular. Is anyone a food I was comfortable with? You know, I found a way to, to do what I like to do and avoid some of the parts of it that I was uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. What were you uncomfortable with? Well, I mean, if you look at me, right, physically, you know, like now, I'm like 40 pounds heavier than I was when I did Chappelle's show. Welcome, everybody, to the Chappelle show. And people are like, how did you gain all that weight? By resting you know, like and like eating it and paying attention to myself. I have actual relationships with my kids. See him again. We're big I've been all over the country touring all my life, oh, but I never saw anything. Now